Let's review Unrivaled Series 14. What's going on guys, Brett Alive back with another video and today we have the newest AEW Unrivaled action figure set here, Series 14 of Unrivaled Figures from Jazzwares. We picked them up from Ringside Collectibles, WrestlingFigures.com, using discount code LIVE at checkout to save 10%. Feel free to do the same if you guys are trying to save some money on your wrestling figure and accessory needs. We're going to be unboxing every single one of these in this video, so if you guys are waiting for a specific one, skip to that specific character unless you guys want to see them all. Watch the entire video. We got Keith Lee, Sore Strickland, which I know a lot of people are excited about. We got the second ever Ricky Starks. We have a Max Caster, Tony Storm, and Anthony Bowens. Let's start off with Mr. Ricky Starks. Here he is sporting the classic AEW style of packaging. You got the Unrivaled Collection logo at the bottom. It's recommended for ages 8 plus, number 128, whatever that means. Series 14. There you can see a picture of the former FTW champion Ricky Starks on the side. Absolute is Ricky Starks doing his signature pose on the back. I like how they do the signatures. I think that's really, really cool. I feel like WWE, the Mattel figures, I feel like a signature on the back of the packaging would be pretty cool on theirs as well. And there you can see the rest of the people in the series on the back. I do see Billy Gunn over here. Is he actually part of the series? I don't think he was. Is that a print mayor? I feel I know these guys are the rest of the series because I have these figures, but I just checked ringside collectibles and this one's not available on there. I don't think he's part of the series. That could be a uh, factory error on this packaging. But either way, we're going to get Ricky Starks out of the box and take a closer look. The Unrivaled Series 14 Ricky Starks is pretty freaking decent. We're going to talk about it right now. But before we do, here is his last figure, which I was a super big fan of when it came out with that insane head sculpt, the awesome blue and yellow attire. Bro, I loved this Ricky Starks. Here's our newest one once again, coming with open interchangeable hands and some really awesome open interchangeable hands that we're able to to do with a Ricky Starks pose with. I love that. We got the FTW Championship. It feels great in hand. My problem with the last FTW title with I, that I got with the Ringside Collectibles exclusive hook, the strap was so stiff. This FTW Championship, the strap is super loose. It's super flexible, which I really like. I like the side plates. It says Taz World Heavyweight FTW Champion. Head scan wise, I do think this resembles a yelling Ricky Starks. What do you guys think? I see people being half and half on this head scan if it actually looks like him. I do feel like it looks like Ricky Starks yelling. That's just my opinion. I do hold it this one a special spot in my heart. That, that literally looks exactly like Ricky Starks in my opinion. The original uh, Unrivaled figure, but this one I still think is pretty decent. And normally when Jazzwares does the open mouse, they completely botch the head scans. But I feel like this one's pretty decent, dude. I feel like it resembles Ricky Starks yelling. And down you do have the chain, which is removable if you do want to remove the interchangeable head scan. I like the part choice for his torso. The shoulders look nice along with the double jointed elbows, the black wrist tape, and a left elbow pad on his left arm. Dude, the tights are sick, bro. Super clean colors going on. You got the orange and the red on the top. You got the gold RS in the front. Main color is white on the bottom. I love the signature on the back. Starks in cursive. Looks so freaking clean, dude. Love that. The trim on the top, bro. Just a really unique attire they chose for this Ricky Starks. Some just nice colors with the white knee pads with the little red accents on the side with the black tape under the knee pad. He's rocking the same boots as his other unrivaled figure. Which one do you guys like better down in the comment section down below? I still have to go with the original. I think the original is a little bit better. I do like the updated skin tone though on our current a little more tanner than the original. Bring in to Miss Tony Storm here. Looking insane bro. I feel like this figure looks super realistic inside of the packaging. I want to get it out and look at the proportions uh, and see what it's all about. But Dude, the head scan looks just like Tony Storm. Oh my gosh. The former women's champion here. Unravel Collection. Very similar packaging to Ricky Stark. So we're not going to spend too much time on it. She looks awesome right there. That's sick. And then on the back, you can see another picture of Storm there. Walking down to the ring. The attires from All Out Chicago, Illinois 2022. And then there you have the rest of the people out of the series besides Billy Gunn. Where is that figure? Is that a misprint? I'm still trying to figure that out. I cannot wait to talk about this Tony Storm figure. But before we do that, we got to talk about her 
accessories, she's coming with three main accessories here, including an entrance jacket, which is half red and half black, the little lightning bolts on the little shoulder area. I like the silver studs, the silver zippers. Yes, it is rubber, would I prefer it to be cloth? Absolutely, but it's still pretty cool. It looks nice on the figure, no doubt about it. But yes, I would have preferred that to be cloth. We are seeing the brand new AEW Women's Championship, bro. Look at how fresh this belt looks, dude. Literally perfect scale for the women's figures. Oh my gosh, here it is next to Tony Storm. And like, dude, come on. Literally perfect scale. This title belt looks awesome, man. Five plated title. Main plate on the front looks sick. Just like that FTW title, we're getting a really nice, flexible material. Not this hard crap that you can barely bend. This is really nice stuff right here. The buttons, don't worry about those. These little studs, don't worry about them not clipping in. They clip in so easily. Top it off, we are seeing some nice circle lens glasses, which I will show on the figure soon here. Here's Tony Storm looking absolutely awesome awesome dude this head scan they absolutely crushed in my opinion i think this looks exactly like tony storm i love the makeup the red lipstick with, with the little stripe below her right eye dude the blonde hair going around to the back looks so clean this little collar she's wearing right here this black and red collar you can remove that if you want to remove the interchangeable head scan you could slip that off if you wanted to her top is really awesome dude like literally got it look at the trend half red half black i think that's just so cool you can feel the stitching in the front there you got the red Red, black, silver studs, the red and the black, lightning bolts on the back, dude. I like the arms. I do feel like the shoulders stick out maybe a little too much. I feel like the shoulders could have been like a little in to the figure because like she's got some bolder shoulders right now. Like look at that, bro. Like push them into the figure just a little bit in my opinion. She's got some really subtle tiny tattoos on her hands. I can see some by her fingers and then by her thumb there, which is pretty cool. Half red, half black, little bottoms here. Some massive Got some big hips going on, I'm not gonna lie. And then moving to the side, you can see the lightning bolt, half red, half black design continuing. Moving down, you do have the black knee pads, which are part of the boots. So the articulation will be inhibited at the knee joint, which I am kind of annoyed by, because that's about as far as you can go back with the Tony Storm, with that uh, knee pad part being attached to to the boot, which I think is kind of annoying, but I'll definitely get over it. You can see these cool little straps here too, these little like strings. That's like a separate piece. Like you can move that up and down, which I think is really cool, but it is stationary in the back. It's glued to the back of the figure. And then to top it off at the front, she's got the black laces. Tony Storm with all of her accessories on really ties this figure together and making it an absolutely amazing women's action figure. And one of my favorite AEW women's figures of all time, the belt drapes over her shoulder really nice. The jacket looks really fantastic. The glasses are a little annoying, dude. The little sides, they don't, I think, believe they're supposed to slide behind her ear, right? And they don't fully slide there, so they kind of slip down. I managed to get them to stay, but honestly, I prefer them without it anyway. I think Tony Storm looks way better without the glasses. The title looks so good above her shoulder. Keith Lee! We got the first ever AEW Keith Lee action figure right here. Looking awesome, man. Uh, but, hey, where's the gray hair? Where's the gray hair for this Keith Lee? Hey, wait a minute. Hey, this is early AEW Keith Lee right here. You got the black hair looking awesome. Keith Lee packaging. There's a picture of the Limitless one on the front. On the back, you can see a picture of Keith Lee. The attire's from All Out, Chicago, Illinois, just like that Tony Storm. I was there. Can you believe it? I was there for this All Out show. Now, the other people in the series, once again, minus Billy Gunn, <laughs> I, I think. And then, without further ado, we are going to jump into uh, Mr. Keith Lee. A brand new Keith Lee. But before we jump into him let's take a look at his accessories we do have the rubber entrance jacket and this is another piece that I would have loved to have seen in cloth material seriously this is a really bulky piece of rubber here it's like a stiff it's like a really stiff piece of rubber right here uh, I do like the logos on it though you can see Keith Lee doing his signature pose on the front nice little zipper going down and that that is where it unbuckles like it's got three little studs that go into the half the pink hood is very cool and I like how you have the limitless logo there and then also the limitless logo there in the cursive which is really clean it's got clean logos but i'm just annoyed by the freaking material interchangeable hands we are getting a set of open interchangeable hands here and then on the figure already i do have fisted interchangeable hands dude i would have loved to have seen a thumbs up interchangeable hand so we could do his signature pose i think that would have been literally limitless if you know what i'm saying Getting into the figure itself he does have a very unique formula to the parts that they used on this but i'm not gonna lie i 
like the parts, dude. They're unique, and I feel like they fit the unique body of Keith Lee. Here's a look at his head scan. It is a little glossy for me. Do I think it 100% resembles Keith Lee? No, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like it's a little glossy for me, but I do like the facial hair. He's looking directly ahead. No facial expression here for Lee. He's not rocking any gray hair yet. Fully black hair. He's got a really big, bulky torso over here, which I do think fits for Keith Lee. I do think this torso is literally super accurate to what my boy's body actually looks like in real life. I'm serious. Like, this literally looks super accurate to what I see on TV. He's rocking two elbow pads. He's got black wrist tape, which is molded onto the figure, which is pretty cool how you could feel that. Limitless logo on the side. Keith Lee on the back, outlined in white, and then Limitless outlined in white as well. Articulation-wise, this thing moves really well for being such a big figure, so don't, don't be too worried about that. And then we do have a set of big knee pads here for the knees and then he does have some tiny boots I'm not gonna lie these are some tiny boots for a such a big man right here like look at how tiny these little feet are and then this figure is absolutely massive I don't know if that's just me overall I think this Keith Lee figure is pretty decent it definitely has its flaws though I do have him next to our two Mattel elite Keith Lee's and I gotta say this is probably still my favorite Keith Lee this chase version of the regular elite is literally top tier but this this AEW unrivaled one's got a pretty freaking sick attire and it'll be pretty unique if you put it on a shelf and look i have him in a signature pose but he doesn't have the thumb out but it still looks pretty decent i do like and top of the chain so i bet you know the name we got max caster right here and this is pretty crazy i feel like we just got the ringside collectibles exclusive claimed three pack which was absolutely amazing and here we go we're getting another set of acclaimed we're getting max caster hey, i ain't complaining let's go they got some Awesome attires. Here is a look at Max Caster's packaging. There you can see a picture of him right there throwing up the piece. There he is on the back spitting some fire. And then there is where the attire is from. I swear, like, every figure in the series is from All Out. Literally the show that I went to. And here is the rest of the people in the series. Without further ado, we are going to get Max Caster out of the box. Here's Max Caster definitely coming with the most accessories out of this entire series. Got a really nice silver chain right here, which is extra long. So you don't even have to remove the interchangeable head scan to slide that on. We have some really nice headphones here, and these are definitely improved from the three pack. Because the three pack ones were super loose, these ones are definitely tighter right here in the middle, so they sort of like squeeze to the head, which is really nice. Got the orange on the side, the black trim, very nice. You got an AEW microphone, so you can spit some heat while he's walking down to the ring. We got the acclaimed hat, which originally in the three pack, because we got the same hat in the three pack, I thought this hat was for Billy Gunn, but they have it here with Max Caster. I'm like, how are we gonna get it on the head? What you do is you basically basically put it on the back here so it sort of sticks like up and you can still see his hair. I didn't even know that. I thought it was for Billy Gunn in the three pack. I do like the logo on it. it says the acclaim. We are seeing an interchangeable head scan right here looking like Max Caster. No doubt about it. He is looking off to the left a little bit. I don't like that. I feel like he should be looking directly ahead. I do like how you could partially see his mustache and beard combo going on like the five o'clock shadow. You can see his hair moving to the side. Nice little fade at the bottom. I always love how they do that. And then we are seeing an interchangeable hand right here. The scissor me hand so you could if you get the anthony bowens in the set you could definitely recreate that and we're getting an awesome cloth good like dude the accessories do not end bro is coming with so much he's coming with this awesome basketball jersey here which says acclaimed on the front 78 do you guys know why he chose 78 in particular not sure we got the white and pink trim and then on the back it does say platinum with the number 78 and once again if you guys are wondering how to remove it and put it on there is velcro on the back makes it really easy to slide on and off without it being like that elastic material where you don't have any Velcro. I'm glad there's Velcro. Great accessories here for Max Caster. He's coming with a lot. And speaking of Max Caster, here is the figure himself. Do I like the main head skin that he's coming with here? This is the one that was on the figure when I took it out of the box. Do I like the tongue out? No, this does not look like Max Caster. I'm not a fan of this. I, I like the idea of it with the tongue out. I think it's funny, but oh man, I'd so rather just have the stern face on where he's looking off to the left a little bit. I I do like the fade on the head scan though. I feel like the torso choice is fire. I love how these AW figures always have these nice diaphragm joints, these double jointed elbows, white wrist tape. Moving down to the tights, bro. Look at the tights here. You got the silver with some nice like black stripes going along the sides. The scissors outlined in pink. Left 
The right knee pad says best wrestler alive. Not sure about that one. He is very talented, though. Uh, we do have the left knee pad here with a microphone on it. Main colors pink. On the back, it does say platinum. Platinum Max Caster. Yo, yo, listen. And then you have the uh, scissors as well. The boots are awesome as well. I like the silver, silver design to them. And I like how they're shiny, too. There's a very shiny pants to this Max Caster. Black laces, black soles. Cannot believe we already have two Max Casters within the span of literally like a month or a month and a half. Here he is, the Ringside Collectibles exclusive acclaimed three-pack one, which was an awesome figure, dude. Really cool, standing next to our brand new Unraveled Series 14 with uh, more taking on more of a darker role, more black than pink on this one, where in this case it's more pink than black on this one. Which one do you guys prefer down in the comment section down below? We do got the tag team partner of Max Caster in the acclaim. We got Anthony Bowens. Here he is inside of the box, looking very similar to his ringside collectibles exclusive just like max caster we are going to get this out of the box we are going to take a closer look and i would assume the attire is probably from all out right yeah of course all out chicago illinois baby there he is on the back scissoring some fans man i wish that was me right there and then there you have the rest of the people out of the series we are going to get him out of the box right now and everyone loves the acclaimed jumping into anthony bowen's accessories he's not coming with as much as max caster was was. But unlike Max Caster, he's coming with two sets of scissoring hands right here, or peace fingers, whatever you guys want to call them. But they are considered scissoring hands. He's coming with two, when Max Caster only came with one. I find that kind of odd. Here's the interchangeable hand for Anthony Bowens right here. And I do think this resembles Anthony Bowens a lot right here. I really do. I love the stern facial expression looking directly ahead with the beard and the mustache combo. This looks exactly like Anthony Bowens, and I like it a lot, man. That's just me. I think this one's really good. That's the one I'm going to be displaying it with. AW microphone, just like Max Caster. We are seeing a rubber vest this time here with Anthony Bowens. And when the rubber vests come in and there's no sleeves, I'm totally fine with them being rubber because then there's no sleeves, so it won't inhibit articulation. But when there's sleeves on a rubber accessory, it makes it it's so difficult with articulation but this totally fine that this is rubber you can see the white decals on the front with the scissors all over the place on the back loving this logo everyone loves the acclaimed with the scissors right there and the scissor fingers really cool he literally wore this when I was watching the show live bro heck of a show went up there with my brother we had a lot of fun here is a look at Anthony Bowen sporting the tongue out head scan tongue out dude they just gotta stop this it's not doing it for me on Max it's not doing it for me on Anthony I just don't like it. What do you guys think of the tongue? Am I being too mean? I don't know. I just don't like it. As far as the rest of the torso, oh, the parts, I feel like they nailed the parts. He is looking a little shiny. I don't know if that's just the plastic that they used on this one in particular, but none of the other figures in the series really look shiny besides the Keith Lee. Uh, but yeah, this one looks a little shiny to me. Double jointed elbows, pink wrist tape, which is pretty nice. We are seeing some cool scissor trunks, if you will, with the pink. On the back, it does say Bowens with a cool scissor going through the top. The knee pads are top tier. You got A, A for Anthony. There's some black paint behind the knee pads, really cleaning it up. And these are basically the same kick pads that were on the ringside collectibles exclusive. I'm going to compare it here in a sec. Uh, it says acclaimed on both kick pads with some nice black pinstriping going to the back where you can see the really nice stitching with the pink, which is really cool attention to detail. I loved the kick pads on the ringside exclusive and I'm loving them here on this unrivaled figure. And look at that, I just noticed that. You can see the strap of the kick pad even goes under the boot. How cool is that? No, like no figure ever do that like that is so awesome here's the ringside collectibles exclusive anthony bowens standing next to our brand new unrivaled series 14 anthony bowens which one do you guys like better do you guys like the more pink or the more black taking on the same trend as the max caster more pink more black which one do you guys prefer honestly i gotta go with the pink one when it comes to anthony bowens here but oh dude i do like the new repaint of the head skin i do feel like it resembles anthony bowens a lot just not that not a big fan of that one. No, thank you. The figure you've all been waiting for. Yeah, Swerve when I drive. Yeah, Swerve when I drive. We got Swerve Strickland, baby. Brand new. Series 14 Swerve Strickland. I am super excited about this action figure. We're going to be unboxing it right now. We had, we had to save it for last. You already know, bro. Come on. Here's a look at the box. You can see my boy looking like a stud on the front. You can see Swerve Strickland rocking the same attire that he's repping in the box and the other people in the series once again minus Billy Gunn. Figure of the series, my goodness. We're jumping in 
into the accessories first. Here is a look at the jacket. Okay, only gripe with the entire thing. This should have been freaking cloth, oh my goodness. But there's no denying that this is still a really, really cool rubber good here. You can see all the different logos on the front, the real ist, and then it goes to the other side. How cool is that? You can see an eyeball there, some sort of flag there, some nice fur at the top of the collar, which is awesome on the back. You got a really cool Swerve logo, which is sick. Some cool like padding, like shield design, which is really unique. It's just a unique frigging jacket that I would have loved to have seen in cloth, but I'll get over it. I will get over it. It still looks really good on the figure. We got fisted interchangeable hands as well as open hands, which are on the figure. I just knocked them down. My boy Swerve get back up. We do have the glasses right here which work way better than the Tony Storm ones. These actually fit behind the ears and they work really well. I'll show them in a bit here so stay tuned. But uh, here it is. Here he is swerving when he drives. We got Swerve Strickland. What an attire choice, dude. Like, literally, this is such a sick attire. Before we get to that, here's a look at the head skin right here, and I do think this resembles Swerve Strickland a lot. I love how you can see the grills in his teeth right there. The beard-mustache combo is dope, dude. Look at the dreads hair going to the side. There's even a green strand in there. See that? How cool is that? And then you got some red and bleached strands over here, which are sick. Tattoo detail all over his torso so in his arms, his faith across his abdomen, some on his right pec. You can see some tattoos on his right arm with the white wrist tape. No tattoos on his left arm there. There's one below his neck as well. Just tattoos all on his upper body, which looks super clean. He's rocking a gold studded black belt, which is really nice. Goes all the way around the figure with with an awesome color scheme to these pants. Purple, orange, and white. Like, who would have ever thought that those colored w colors would go absolutely insane together? It says Swerve on his uh, left thigh, and then over here you have his logo of him sort of like as a skeleton, which is super freaking sick. I love, like, the drips, like, on the back. Oh, this is so clean. Knee pads-wise, he is repping some orange with the back being white, and I love how the knee pads are split. You see that not inhibiting articulation whatsoever and then on his calves it's completely silver what a way to turn it around orange purple and white and then rocking completely silver right here above the boots like that looks so cool and then he's rocking some smaller boots which definitely fit the size of the figure unlike that keith lee keith lee needs to have he needs to have bigger boots no doubt about it but these boots work for the swerve strickland my goodness aw jazz wears literally nailed this swerve i want to throw the accessories the glasses the jacket and i want to show you what this figure's looking like. Here's Swerve Strickland sporting the glasses and the jacket, and my goodness, does it tie this figure together. I just love the color scheme and the awesome look of this figure. It's just so freaking clean. This is a must. If you're an AW fan, this is an absolute must for your collection. It's super a duper awesome figure. I love this figure, bro. This is really freaking cool. I don't, I don't normally go this crazy over an AW figure either, but this one... Whoa, this is really, really cool. Make sure the glasses go behind the hair. Make sure they go behind the hair and not over the hair. Otherwise, it will look bad. It just has more of a realistic look when it's behind the hair. Yes, think of this series down in the comment section down below. Is it one of the best Unrivaled series of all time? I think it's a really freaking good series with a lot of good figures inside of it. My favorite figure out of the series, as you guys would probably guess, is the Swerve Strickland. Number two, coming right up next to that would be Tony Storm. I absolutely love that Tony Storm. Storm. It's freaking awesome. Number three, I gotta give it to my boy Anthony Bowens. I think that figure is absolutely awesome. Number four, I'm gonna give it to Ricky Starks. Number five is gonna go to Max Caster, and my least favorite figure of the series will go to Keith Lee. Your ranking might be different down in the comments section down below. If you're interested in picking up any of these figures, they are available at Ringside Collectibles. WrestlingFigures.com. Discount code LIVE saves 10%. Please let me know what your thoughts are. Overall, I think this series is a lot of fun with some really cool characters in it. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section down below, and I will see you guys next time. This is Brett Alot, signing out.